Well, good morning to each and every one of you. It's certainly good to see a, such a good number out this morning and so many children here. We're certainly blessed to have so many children in attendance this morning. It's always a wonderful thing to see children hear children, to know children are there. We know how important it is that children hear God's Word. I know that uh, a lot of times with children, we have the idea, and certainly people think about how that it's hard sometimes for children to grasp everything that's said, and that's okay. Sometimes it's hard for adults to grasp everything that's said, but we are glad that they get to hear God's Word because those little building stones add up to a building. The little small stones, little small pebbles, they build a road if you let them slowly lay therein. I want to look this morning at a lesson on really telling the truth and how important it is to tell truth, how important it is to speak truth because we live in a world of lies and we need truth because truth is what's important. I want to read for you this morning on James uh, to begin the lesson. It's James chapter 3. I want to read starting in verse 6. And the tongue and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of the things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. We have to watch what we speak, and how we speak. And the things that we say, because we're constantly bombarded with things that are lies. We're constantly bombarded with things that are not true. And we want to make sure we're speaking truth. We get God, we see what God has said, and that is truth. That's where we find truth. Because we find all sorts of debauchery, all sorts of false ways, all sorts of half-truths. If it's a half-truth, it's a lie. We find all sorts of things that are not true. We have to watch what we take in and what we say because we want to make sure we're speaking truth. How often have people said things? I'm going to go over to Matthew chapter 12. How often have we heard people speak things, even referring to the Scripture, and it's false. It's a false way. It is not truth because people have heard someone else say it. They've not read it for themselves, and they repeat it. Well, that happens a lot. And sometimes it's easy because somebody, someone will like some individual, what they're saying, and they'll take it in, and without any guard, and this is our guard, without any guard, they'll just simply repeat it. Now, I don't care who it is, whether it's me or anyone else, when you hear what's said, check what the Scriptures say. Because men are fallible. Every man is fallible. God's Word is perfect. So we make sure that we check what's being said, again, myself and everyone else, against what God says to make sure it's true. Make sure it's right. Make sure what we're repeating, what we're saying is true. So people hear truth and not opinion and certainly not lies. But in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 36, But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. If every idle word, we give an account of that, how important is it for us to make sure what we're saying is true? Well, it's very important, not only for ourselves, but of all those around about us that hear it. All those that hear it, when someone says, Well, I know the Bible says this. Where does it say that? If someone says, I know it says it, I know it's in there. Sometimes people say that having no idea of what it actually says just because they want to prove a point. And that's terrible. If someone's only purpose in reading the Scriptures is to prove a point, they're missing the entire point. It's not to just make a point. It's to go to heaven. It's to get to heaven. It's to be pleasing to God. It's to say those things which are upright in His eyes and not just man's eyes. If you want to turn with me over to James, I'm going to turn there and go to James chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which through, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, are yet are they turned about with a very small helm. 
whosoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth the great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. It is so important to bridle our tongues, to bring it into subjection, to control it, to make sure that what we are saying is true. It is so important. It is vital for us spiritually. It's vital for us physically as well to bridle our tongues. Now, we don't hold back what God's Word says, says, but we bring into subjection our whole body, including our tongue, and we make sure that what we're saying is true, is truth and is right before God. Again, in James chapter 1, same book, but in chapter 1 and verse 26, if any man among you seem to be religious, now listen to this scripture. This is like throwing cold water in your face if you don't know this, if you don't practice this. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but to see with his own heart, this man's religion is vain. It's for naught. For naught. For you. It's of no use. It's vanity. It's vain. If a man does not bridle his tongue. How important is it for us to bridle our tongue? It's the utmost important. Yeah, most important. It's very important for us to guard what comes out of our mouth. So often people will say things, and Proverbs is where I'm going to turn to, Proverbs chapter 17. So often people will say things, and I'll say, I wish I hadn't said that. I think it's probably happened to, if not everybody, most people, most of us. I wish I hadn't said that. We have to practice. It is a, it's something that you practice and you put into practice, it's not something that typically comes natural. To most people, there could be some exceptions where people are very guarded with what they say, but most people have to practice that. Practice it a lot. Practice it daily. In Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 28, this verse is one that I've read before, and I kind of, it always, well, really made me laugh when I read this verse. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So often we can look at things and we can say, Oh, I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I just I stuck my foot in my mouth, and how better would it have been if we just zipped our mouth and listened? Zipped our mouth and just listened before we stuck our foot in our mouth. And we can read examples of sometimes where people would speak up too quickly. We can read the scriptures. And I know sometimes people will look at the Scriptures and the individual you read about and maybe they don't think about the mistakes they've made. Who, who comes to mind when you think about someone who would speak up real quick and yet even better sometimes for him to just be silent? Nonetheless, an example for us, and I'm glad those examples are written down so I can look at these individuals and say, you know, they make mistakes sometimes. But Peter, I say that from time to time, Peter, Peter sometimes would speak up real quick and then he was rebuked. Then he was told what he said was wrong. In other words, he had, to, he had to turn from what he was saying because he was wrong. Well, we can learn from these Scriptures. Proverbs and Psalms are full of lessons for us to learn of and all through the Scriptures. But a lot of times we turn to Proverbs. I read through Psalms, Proverbs, and learn so many lessons about that. Learn so many lessons about how that we should interact and speak and the things that we should say and how we are to denounce evil and to not speak good things toward evil, to not bid someone God speed that's doing evilness. No, not even close. We don't do that. Well, some might say, well, isn't that offensive to some people? Sometimes people find the truth very offensive. doesn't mean we don't speak it. That means we don't go along with evilness. That means we don't have anything to do with it. That we speak truth in a world full of lies. In Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, if you want to turn there with me, I'm going to start at verse 1 when I get there, but Acts chapter 5. These are two individuals as well. No doubt many of you have read these scriptures many times. Situation of two individuals that purpose to lie. Now, how serious was it for these two individuals that lied? It cost them their lives. In Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 1, But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, so they knew amongst themselves what they were doing. 
So often a wife and a husband, they are intimately know what the other one's thinking. They talk, and they very much know what the other one's doing. In this case, it tells us plainly that they did. And bought and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price? There's the problem. There's the problem. While it remained, was it not thine own? After it was so, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. When you purposeful something for God, you better make sure that you are going to follow through with it. You better make sure. Now that applies to all areas of service to God. We better make sure we follow through with it. But here especially what these individuals were doing, it's like when someone says, if they were to come in and say, hey, I'm going to go sell this land and I'm going to give all that I make off this land to the church for the treasury. I'm going to, sell, I'm going to give all this for this purpose. And then they sell it and they keep back part of the price. That's what happened. They lost their lives because of it. Came on all them that heard these things, and the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was cut done, came in, and Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. She was lying. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord, behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. They both lost their lives because they decided to lie. Lies are serious, detrimental, and eternally detrimental. For us, in this case, they lost their physical life. Not everyone necessarily loses their physical life because of a lie, but it is eternally dangerous. It is falling after Satan. That's what lies are. People say, what about a white lie? We have that concept in our society today of having white lies. What is a white lie? It is something straight out of hell. That's what it is. There's no such thing as a white lie. It's just people trying to degrade the seriousness of it and say, oh, I'm just going to tell a white lie. You didn't tell a white lie, you told a lie. It's either truth or lies. There is no in-between. People like to make a distinction there because they don't want to feel bad about what they're doing. It is a lie. In Proverbs chapter 12, if you want to turn with me there, I'm going to read in just a second. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22. What does it say about lies here? Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His are His delight. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. It's evilness before God. You know how much weight it puts on a person that's a liar? I want you to think about something. Everything they lie about, if they lie and they go about their life, they lie and they lie, all these people they're lying to, they're going to have to keep up telling those lies Otherwise, they get caught up and people know they're a liar. If you know someone's a liar, how much do you trust them? You don't. You don't trust them. You don't trust a liar because you don't know who when they're telling the truth or when they're lying. You ever run into somebody who's a habitual liar? I have. I've run into somebody who's a habitual liar. Caught them up in a lot of things they were lying about. Every time they spoke, you had to wonder if it was true. And you don't believe anything they say. And that's a shame. And of course, I'm not going to name that person. I typically don't when I say things like that. It's not my intent to embarrass someone. I don't want to do that. But I want to illustrate the fact of how serious lying is. It's hard to diminish from how serious a lie is. In John chapter 8, in verse 44, we see where lies come from. John chapter 8, and verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's where all lies come from. They come from Satan, the devil. 
They are counterfeit. So often you've heard me say that, counterfeit. They're counterfeit to the truth. They're trying to perpetuate something that's not true in order to get something or push something or persuade someone in the wrong way. Tell the truth. Sometimes it might be difficult. Sometimes it might be difficult for you to tell the truth. Sometimes it might be a situation where it might not feel comfortable for you because of the people that you're around. Tell the truth. Regardless, tell the truth. We have to make sure we're telling the truth. What if someone asks you, I'm going to go over to Proverbs chapter 6 if you want to turn there with me. Sometimes people ask you this. They'll come to you and maybe it's because they genuinely want to know. They'll say, do you think everybody that is outside of Christ, and someone will say this, someone that's not a Christian, they'll say it like this, someone that's not a Christian, do you think that person didn't make it to heaven? Open up the Scriptures and show them what it says. Open them up and show them what it says. They need to know the truth, the seriousness of it. They don't need, they don't need fluffy fairy tales and comforting lies. Sometimes lies are comforting because someone wanted to hear it. doesn't make it true. It never will be true. We show them the truth because we want people to follow the right path to God. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto Him. A proud look, notice the second thing. A lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief. Now what does it say again, verse 19? A false witness that speaketh lies. Twice it's mentioning a type of lie. Twice, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Twice there. It is important to know that lies are an abomination. They are evil before God. There are some more points I want to make on this lesson, but I want to bring this out first. In Matthew chapter 15, if you want to turn there with me. You know, someone that tells lies long enough, regardless of what it is, eventually they start believing it themselves. You ever notice that? Sometimes people that they've told a lie so long that they start to believe it and they think it's actually true. That's a dangerous place too. Matthew chapter 15 verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Those things which are not true, those things which are going to corrupt, they speak from the heart. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 7, same chapter. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, The people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We, If we serve God, it, it must be, and it cannot be in any other way, but in spirit and in truth. Those two things. If we are not abiding in those two things, then we are falling short detrimentally. Detrimentally. We are never going to get to where we want to go. We want to get to heaven. But what does God say? We have to worship in spirit and truth. Truth. Where do we start with truth? We start in God's Word. How do we know what that is? We read His Word. What do we practice? What is in God's Word? What do we speak? What is in God's Word? Not opinions, not I think, not I like. What God says. You may, when you read God's Word sometimes, you might look at something, especially someone that's a new Christian, doesn't understand the full scope and concept and what is being said in the Scripture and say, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Wait and pray and read the Scriptures for understanding. Wait on what God says. Wait on His knowledge and understanding. Matthew chapter 5. If you want to turn back just a little bit with me, I was in 15. I'm going to chapter 5. I want to read starting at verse 33. Again, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto thy Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is His footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of 
the great king. Neither shall thou swear by the head, thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. When we speak, it is truth. Period. I should not, you should not, no one should not have to say for someone to believe what you say that you swear. God says not to do it anyway. But you shouldn't have to do it. Someone shouldn't have to want you to do it. When you say something, you should be truthful. You should have a reputation of being truthful. Even if someone doesn't like everything you say, they should know when you say it, it is true. You shouldn't have to worry about that to begin with. We're in a world full of lies. Why do you think when you go into the courtroom, they want you to, they'll ask you to swear or affirm when you have to take a stand or anything else legally because they are going to hold you in contempt of court if you are telling a lie. If we were in a world of truth, that wouldn't be necessary. When you went into a courtroom, if everybody spoke the truth, they wouldn't have to do that. Why? Because everything you said would be true. But nonetheless, that's not the case. But let it always be so as Christians. When we speak, it's the truth. Not our opinion, but truth. Opinion can bring about a multitude of lies. In 1 Peter, if you want to turn there with me, 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 11, this, if people learn this, how much better off we would be. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Everything we do, and I mean everything, whether it be what you do throughout the day when you're at work or any other place, use the Scripture Turn to God for understanding and prayer and make sure the decisions you make and what you speak is according to His Word because His way will guide you. Now, sometimes, again, it may not be the easy path. Was it easy for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to look into a fiery furnace knowing that they're going to be thrown into that furnace nonetheless they were firm but not knowing that they were if they said what was true the king was going to have them thrown into the fiery furnace would that have been easy would it have been easy for you would it have been easy for me I'm looking at a fiery furnace now you sat in front of brush fires you know how hot they get and that's that's a pales in comparison to this these men that threw them in there it was so hot we can see that individuals perished so hot. They had heated it more and more and more to make it hotter, to throw these men in there. Sometimes telling the truth and abiding in the truth takes a lot of courage. It takes courage to tell the truth. The cowardly lie to get what they want. The courageous tell the truth to the end no matter what. We have to make sure we tell the truth on everything. If the world doesn't like it, and they won't, and there's going to be a lot of people that don't, we still tell the truth. Matthew chapter 12, if you want to turn back there with me. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. We're going to stand and fall on what we say. They did in that time. We will in this time. And however long the world stands going forward, they will as well. Let it be on truth. They didn't like everything Christ said in the time that He was here. They didn't like all the words He said. He was crucified. He was crucified. We can see that as an example besides all the other examples that we have in the Scriptures to see that even when the Son of God would speak, they didn't like everything was said. They preferred lies. They preferred to hear lies. They preferred to go after things that were what they would prefer. That's what happens now. There's no difference now or then. We're still dealing with people. We're still dealing with the same sins. We're still dealing with Satan that tries to tempt and pull people out. 
We're still dealing with the exact same thing. The only difference now and then is who's alive. That's it. It's the only difference. In John chapter 4, if you want to turn with me for just a second. I'm going to read verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That was a verse I was referring to earlier, and how the Scripture tells us exactly what we're supposed to do. Follow God's Word. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. If you want to turn over to the book of Amos with me, I want to turn there for just a second. And this was a situation that I find very interesting. In Amos, in it's chapter 7, you know, we can read many times in the Scriptures how that those that are serving God was told to not do what they were doing, even when they're telling the truth. Don't do what you're doing. Amos chapter 7, verse 10. I would encourage you to read all of this book, but I'm specifically, for the sake of time, going to this area. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, the king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. He was telling the truth. And the land is not able to bear all his words. They're too hard for us to hear, in other words. We just can't stand these words. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led captive out of their own land. And Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, now I kind of laugh when I read this, but go flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. People do this today. When you find someone who's preaching sometimes, whether it be in a multitude of places, whether you're just trying to talk to someone in a situation, and maybe you're just teaching the gospel at that point, or just discussing the scripture, I'll say, go over somewhere else. We don't want to hear that over here. Why don't you go over there? You can go over there and prophesy. You can go over there and preach. You can go over there and teach and eat bread. Just get out of here. We don't want to hear that. You know what he did? I'm going to read it to you in just a second. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Then answered Amos and said unto Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a greater, a gatherer, rather, a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Notice what he was just told. Go over somewhere else. Hey, I'm going to tell you something right now. That's what's going on. Amos says, I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm going to tell you right now. Now therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest prophesy not against Israel, and, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be an harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and they and thy land shall be divided by line. And thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. They told him not to do this. You know what he did? <laughs> That's exactly what he done. That's exactly what he done. He went ahead and said exactly what God said to do anyway. He wasn't worried about the fact that man's telling him not to do something. He was worried about God telling him to, excuse me, to do something. He was absolutely worried about that. He wanted to follow God. One to see what he should do and follow after what he should do. In Acts chapter 5, if you want to turn there with me, and that is just one example. This Bible, a lot of times people refer to it as a book. It is not a book. It is a Bible. It is a collection of many, many things, and books, plural, is one of them. It is a collection, and it is something we need to study diligently. But people refer to it as just a book, sometimes not because they're being mean, but because that is how it is classified a lot of times. When someone goes to look for the Bible, it is a they classify the world classifies it as a book, but it's not. It's far from just a book. It is a Bible. It stands alone amongst everything else. In Acts chapter 5, verse 27, if you want to turn there with me just a second. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in his name? That's Jesus who they're referring to, in his name. Behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intent to bring this man's blood upon us. They didn't want them speaking the truth. It bothered them greatly that these this situation had occurred. 
Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. They were told not to preach Jesus, so they went and preached Jesus. <laughs> They didn't look for the authority of men to do what God had already given them authority to do. They were going to speak truth. They were going to preach truth. They were going to do it anyway. They're going to follow after God. When it comes to decision between following man or God, speaking truth or lies, we speak truth and we follow God every single time. There is no decision to be made there. We should already have that made up in our mind. If you wait till you get to that situation where you have to make that situation sometime in your life, you may falter. Make it today. Make it steadfast so that you don't have to worry about it. What would I do? How often does that happen to people when they are confronted with something and they're not sure what to do because they have to think through it? There is no decision to be made. We have so many examples we can look at scriptures of individuals that followed after what God said, no matter what, we too should do that. We too should follow what God says. Brother John, how important is it for us to not add to or take away from God's Word? Eternally serious. We know that. He says that in his prayers all the time. We know that he says that. It is vitally important to speak truth all the time, not add to God's Word or take away from God's Word. It's very important for us to remember that. Now I want to go over and read for you, if you want to turn there with me, in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18. It starts at 13, but it's verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Also in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, it's telling you to do the same thing, to not add to God's word. We can't take away from God's word. We abide just there in God's word. That is something that we've always supposed to have been doing. That is something that Adam and Eve was supposed to have done. They were given a very simple thing, a very simple commandment to follow. When I think about what they were given to do, we think about how that they, unfortunately, they disobeyed what God said. But they were not supposed to. And it brought about all sorts of things for humanity and problems. And sin is what brought in all those problems that we deal with this very day. Lies have the same impact going forward in your generations as well as everyone else's generations. When someone lies, it doesn't just have an impact now, it has an impact later. It can generationally affect your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and everyone around you. Lies propagate lies. They are death and destruction, not life. In Luke chapter 16, this is the, some of the last verse I want to look at today with you. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, He that is filled in that which is least is faithful. I'm sorry, let me, re say, let me say that again. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If I therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous maimon who will commit to your trust the, to the true riches. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and maimon. If we're not faithful in the small things, we, no one should expect us to be faithful in the greater things. If we're not telling the truth 